Hello, hello, people. Welcome to some late Swedish time. But yeah, I'm here first off to talk about the NES prolific list, which is a list that uh, is made by a wonderful co NES community member called Aaron to you too, which you have seen playing uh, Uncharted Waters, and I know he's played more, but I'm blanking right now, so I'm sorry, but he has played a few games during this uh, marathon, so I'm hoping that everyone can hear me loud and clear, if not, I will just speak up a little bit more, but yeah, let me just go in with some introduction about the NES prolific list for people that don't know this is like an attempt or a way to showcase who has speedrun the NES library the best way or yeah yeah the best way like it's not about being the best at few games or even being the best at many games it's yet mainly about how well yes be run all the games obviously no one has be run all 700 plus games but there are quite a lot of uh, of people that has be run over 50 games and a few over 100 and one person that's over 300 I believe smart Alec is currently if I'm not misremembering we can check that later but I just want to give a small small introduction about the list so uh, Aaron to you two created a world record ranking list where he ranked the main categories of each speed running or speed run for the NES where uh, People actually went very hard on trying to get as many world records as possible. I was one of them. I think I had like 20 something world records at some point. But that has dropped significantly since then. But after a while Aaron kind of wanted to make something that showcased a little bit more about speedrunning than just the top runner of each game and he came up with this idea to do let me just do this really quickly I need to do it okay I'm sorry about that I just need, needed to do something in the background that was disturbed very disturbing but yeah he wanted to make a list that was a little bit more about showcasing NES speedrunner in a more grand scale so to speak so instead of going looking for who's the best or whatever he decided to change the perspective to the prolific side of things and as I said like the world record ranking list was mostly promoting uh, uh, running for world records so like most of us that was grinding that list we only cared about world records and speed running is so much more about just chasing for world records so what Aaron did was he created this ranking system a point system which we will dwell a little bit deeper in in, in a little bit but basically now you can do a run of almost any game and still get a score based on that and uh, uh, what this created was in Janu January which was basically the first month where it was um, public and like a live list we saw like 53 new world records in the categories that was counted and like some were obviously home alone world records which if you know Home Alone, you just play that game and you get a new world record basically. Like 
there's no way to go faster. Only way to go slower is if you pause the game, I believe. And uh, in the first mo month, we saw several people uh, pushing for for world records. Also, my cat wanna say hello. But yeah, uh, my cat is really distracting me right now. So he will just have to be in my lap so he doesn't walk in front of the monitor. <laughs> but but yeah, uh, in the first first month there were many people. Like Sarconis was one of the people that improved the most points throughout the whole uh, whole month. I believe he uh, basically like over doubled his points in one month which shows like if you want to take the list serious you can really grind points and like like you have people like see hardcore return to speed running because because they wanted to get uh, the top one spot and they managed to do that before, like, Aaron decided to change the formula slightly, which is the new formula we have right now. And, like, like many people saw, like, make it into the top 100, the top 50, or even the top 10 as a really big achievement. Uh, Personally, I grinded for top 10 in, in January, ran like 20 games or so. And I thought that was super fun because I was a little bit burned out on speedrunning. And then I got like a way to get motivated to speed speedrun, which is what you should take this list as like a motivation to run more games because we always want to see more people running more games and like uh, there were other people really pushing we have had like Sight Town, Dorito Breath, Ness Atlas, Oreb7, Ray Dude, Tom Caps, Wesper, Ruralis, Soda Noir and several other people just really pushing their times really high up and like Sodanor for example he hasn't been speed running a lot throughout the later years but he returned he got like an insane world record in uh, <coughs> in uh, uh, Donkey Kong 3 he got a Pictionary world record I believe he tied or did he actually beat one of the world records I consider to be one of the strongest on the NES, which was Metal Storm. Like that, that world record from White Hat was like so incredible. And just seeing someone getting like dragged back into speedrunning because of this list and being looking at that game and be like, I want to get that world record is really, really fun. And then we have had like Tom Cabs that really didn't speedrun NES games before. And uh, and he got like world records in games like Friday the 13th and uh, he stole my double dribble world record I know. Ice hockey. Uh, he got the world record in magic darts. Like a lot of short games where you like mostly grind attempts. And he got like the world records really quickly, which is really fun as well to see. And and uh, yeah, and for the like for the future, uh, Aaron is planning automation, add a, adding separate version because like 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 I always say that. TMR, the Mexican runner, kind of ruined the definition of NES. Because every person thinks that NES is only the US releases, but it's also the Famicom <laughs> releases, really. Like, that's the whole Nintendo library, but 
Usually when, pe when people say the NES library, they only talk about the US and PAL releases. And they ignore Mayong because it's too hard to find. But yeah. So he's planning to add separate version, which means that he is gonna add... Uh, uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't mean he's, he ruined NES, but the, the definition of the NES library, Aaron. Do not, uh, do, do not quote, quote, misquote me. <laughs> but yeah, he's planning to add one list with all the Famicom games and one list with all the homebrew games. And then adding more value to running basically bad value or good value games that are highly ran and also adding multiple categories. So yeah, I think that's all for introduction and uh, we are gonna run a few games where I'm gonna just start and stop the timer, but we will keep it under my 1 and 20 estimation here. So don't worry, RGL, because my timer isn't running. We will, uh, we will get the timer running for the games later on. But yeah, so we can check like the list really quickly here, because you've been steering on it for a little bit. So this is the list currently, uh, I think it's cut off a little bit, yeah, so let me just double check where it's cut off, it's cut off after around here, so it doesn't really matter. So you can see like the most ran game is Super Mario Brothers and it's worth uh, 1000 points. And you see this mod slash R, which is basically just, uh, if we go slightly to the right here, you see these modifiers right here, which means like this is if the game is counted as a long game or a short game, or if it's a full game, a partial goal, a partial goal would be, for example, this game, which is Dr. Mario. Which, the reason why it's counted as a partial goal is because you do not beat the full game. You only beat round 0 to 10. I guess full game would be 0 to 20. Or does it get, maybe it gets harder of 20. Or if it's a minor goal, and a minor goal basically means you cannot fail the game. So if we go down here, so here we have a minor goal right here, which is Mickey Safari in Letterman, Letterland, I mean, <laughs> which basically you cannot fail this game. Like you will play it, and the only way to fail it if is if. My cat jumps on my console, which has happened. I had a, I was four hours into a Dragon Warrior run and my cat decided to jump on my console. That was a sad day, a really sad day, day for me. But yeah, you can see like, like even though Super Mario Brothers is like triple ran as Super Mario Brothers 3, it's still worth the same points. So it does have a curve that is counted on this one that decides like how much each game or where the game is put on the curve basically. Yeah, I mean that's we will get into that later but basically this list is a little bit uh, I say it's opinionated or driven by opinion the most out of all the prolific lists that currently exist because there exist other prolific lists we will go over later as well but it's a little bit like we talk talk as a community about like what we 
consider and I know Tetris was one of the games we talked about and I don't remember what the argument was but it was probably because it really doesn't have an ending like unless you count like breaking the game to be an ending but even that's just you breaking the game so it's not really a true ending if that makes sense but yeah we can look at the standings and here you can see like the standings with all the points and everything so you see the games and the total points and the average points per game and then we see here this is the score change from last month as well over here so if we start start by games it's obviously just how many games have the person run so you can see uh, like hitting the top five you basically need to run a hundred games or if you're a monster like spiral you probably only need to run like 65 games but it's basically something you see like in the top 10 is that you need to run quite a lot of games Oh right, right, right. This third one is not this change. It's the difference in points up to the next person, obviously. Thank you, Sirconus, for pointing pointing that out. But yeah, and the uh, and the next column we have the total points, which is obviously just all the points uh, combined together. And you can see uh, that Toad. Uh, Legend with the in NES speedrunning is ranked number one with almost 46k points. Basically, you have like the old school speedrunner versus the new school speedrunner here. Even though she's hardcore has been around since I don't want to say a, a year, but I feel they started around. 2019 but maybe maybe i'm completely wrong there but i feel like they are a newer speed speed runner and here here you can see like uh, smart alec is the person that has ran the most nes games out of anyone on this whole list and they are really high up but you can also see that the average per game is is way lower than the rest and like another thing you can see a lot see is like like uh, no one in the top 10 is a bad player by any means obviously and you can see like like as long as you have like over 290 average you should feel very proud and here is where we get into the average slash game one which is basically all of all of your games points divided by the games you ran ran and that one has a little bit of a like like i feel like that's probably the one that uh, created the most like discussion because what people started looking at right away was like okay whoever has the average per game is the really the strongest speedrunner which is not true at all because every game is not counted the same because as i showed you here the top games are worth a thousand points but if you run a lot of games that aren't worth that many points like like if uh, you're aiming for an average of 300 like all you need to do is not run any games that is worth less than 300 points and you will probably get an average over 300 and that's why it's a uh, way more it's super impressive that someone like spiral that has ran 50 games has a 500 plus average or even more impressive that someone like Toad has a 
over 320 errors at 140 games. So, so it's a it's a metric you can look at, but it's also a very flawed metric to look at. And if we continue to the right here, you can see they have ranked like the average here. So, so obviously the first couple of people here are all people that have only ran one game. Then it becomes like two games. Then three games with column ball. And you can go down and see like Beko is the first one that has run over five games. That has... Is very high up on the ranking. Like if you start moving down to like... You need to move down quite a lot to get like people that hasn't run only a couple of games. Like, I think Cool Kid would be maybe. Oh, so so Danor, for example, twenty games, six six oh nine. Uh, stands twenty nine games with six hundred ninety six in average. And so on, and all the way over here, we have like the number of games ran, which is something I find really interesting to look at. Just seeing like, like where does it plateau out? Like, like you can see, there's quite a few people that has run more than ten games, but it really starts. It seems to be most common to run like 1 to 12 games or so. And then it's like more rare to run more games. But we we can take take a look at a random leaderboard here just to showcase how it works. I'm going to pick a game that I'm not planning to showcase today. Mm. Let's take DuckTales. DuckTales is probably a game that everyone here knows, right? So it should be over here. So let's go Duck... Oh, it's probably one word, right? Yeah. So if we go over here... So we can see that Andesvea is ranked 1. The game value is 990 points. And... Uh, and... Um, I'm just thinking here. Uh, by, by the way, if anyone on RGL wanna link this spreadsheet for people to check out, watch and... Um, just look through themselves, that's okay. If you don't have the link, I can post it in Discord. If so, just make sure to add me if that's the case. And I will give you the link right, right away. But yeah, you can see uh, the game value is 990. That means that the top spot is worth... Or the 100% of the game is worth 990 points. And, uh, but you can see that Endesvea is actually getting almost 1600 points here. And the reason for that is that the first place will always get 150% of the game value. Which means, uh, uh, basically, basically the 990 becomes uh, <laughs> math in my head. This. No one is gonna help me here. I need to figure this out myself. So that would be... Uh, 1485? Is that correct? Yeah, 1485. And that's still not what the final one is here. And that's because every world record you get 100 bonus points for. And that's how we get up to the 1585 points here. 
and uh, and the same thing for the second place here you can see it, there is a number of first here a curve and a rand run cap and to use so you can see as long as circola or Stracula is uh, within one percent of the first place here they will always receive 99% of the score they can plus 50 points for second place but if they are below let's say his time would have been like Dexter's time here at 98.78% he would get 98.78% out of 990 plus 50 points. So, so there is an incentive to try and get as high up as possible, but also a good enough time to get maximum points that you can receive. and uh, yeah we can check right here like you see like i would say like in one day you can probably get a 730 in duct tape like if you spend one day learning good scraps like if you don't get a good rng run you should still get like a sub 730 and you see that barely breaks into the top 100 here so like if you're going for a game like DuckTales for prolific points or what we call it in the community is PP which is prolific points so we always say grow PP get more PP but yeah to start gaining PP in this this game you actually need to put in quite some effort and that's one of the issues that Aaron wanna fix in the future is to just get more uh, yeah get more uh, more reason to run more RAM games for example if we go over here to uh, to Super Mario Brothers which I would say most people would say that like getting a top or a sub 5 in uh, Super Mario Brothers is a huge achievement for any speed speedrunner. Like you you need to do a few tricks. Like obviously it's not like super hard to get a sub 5, but it's still an achievement that should be celebrated. And that's where the issue with the point system kind of gets when you only include the top 100 is a game like Super Mario Brothers. You need a 457 to even start getting points in Super Mario Brothers 1. Which is a little bit like discouraging when you want to do, do it for points. So, hopefully uh, this will be fixed in a future update. But yeah, orig originally my thought was I was gonna do like a high score challenge to see how many points I could get like in one setting. But because I wanna show off the other list, we are gonna do a couple of runs just to showcase like what kind of points you would get so I'm gonna show off a few games right here and while we're loading up the game here I'm gonna I'm planning to do should we do Donkey Kong 3 or should we do do you want to see me struggle with, with math and map and should we do Donkey Kong Jr. just to showcase like what a game would give in points. I guess we could do both. Uh, 
Uh, I'm just finding the game right here, and so so let's just do Donkey Kong right here. Yeah, we will do Donkey Kong Junior map as well, and I'm gonna do this right now, let me just uh, cut the music in the background here, let me get my NES music out, make sure we don't have double audio, and, and let's, let's just do one run. So this is a game that's really quick and easy to learn. It took me like 20 minutes to get fourth place or something. And um, the main reason behind that is that there is a death glitch you can do, which I will not be going for now because I will not get it. This is also one of the games that Sodanor <laughs> destroyed the world record in. Because he was the only one that went for the double death glitch. But yeah, let's just get a run going here. So we start. And all we need to do is try and get... Get something Kong here to move up. We could have gotten the death glitch there actually. And by getting the death glitch, you skip all that counting down and stuff. But it also means we can't do this stage as fast, so you can still get a pretty good time by... By just doing like regular strats. And I'm not really mashing really hard here. Oh, so... Let's say that was a 46 flat or something. So we can let the game be on in the background here. So we can go and check here. On the prolific list really quickly here. If we go to uh, right here. And we just control F. Dong. Geek. Kong. So Donkey Kong 3. So that would be in uh, 47 would have given me around... We, we can say anywhere between like... Like... Like 6... Well, let's say 40 to 120 points. And... And that was only one run, like if I continue doing runs now, I could probably pretty easily get like a 45 without going for st stronger strats. And like, like I said, I got this run that is ranked 6 now in like less than one hour. So this would be a really good game to just play for points, because it has a lot of runners, as you can see, it has over a hundred runners. Uh, it does get a little bit pino like punished for not being a long game. But it's still worth almost 900 points. And here you can see <laughs> Soda just destroying the old record with over three seconds. And in a game that's not even a minute long. So that's pretty insane. But yeah, you guys also wanted me to showcase Don Kong Jr. So let's do that really quickly. We're gonna do Don Kong Jr. map here. Just because it's a little bit funny to see someone struggle with the uh, map. So let's see. Okay, uh, let's just do nine times nine. Okay, 
then we do plus two. So this this would be a reset if we actually was going for PB attempts, obviously. Uh, nine times eight plus six. So this is one of the games you can actually fully manipulate, but I really don't know if anyone has done that yet. Uh, let's do eight times eight, I guess. Plus three. So basically what you want, what you want in this game is just the uh, multiplication runs like anything you can multiply with uh, with something else to actually get the number you want is what you really is looking for but we're going strong so one of the things you can do in this game is actually uh, the first stage is actually quite easy to manipulate the... Oh, that's not what we want to do. Let's just do 9, I guess. Then we do times uh, uh, 7, maybe. I don't know where we're ending up. Okay. And now we do minus, and we want to do 1. No! Uh, <laughs> uh, we need uh, plus... And now we need to go all the way to the other side. So we go over here. And I think that's the ending. So that was a really bad run. I don't even know if that is going to be worth any points, to be honest. That's how bad of a run that was. But we will check here, um, it's right over here. Uh, let me just double check, yeah, I'm showing. So here, here, here you can see like the world record is quite a, quite faster. And something else I didn't explain was that if, if uh, your world record is strong enough, you can actually get bonus points. So, for example, his score is 109% faster than second place, which means he will get even more points for being first. But yeah, let's see here, 217. Okay, so that run would be worth like, like 45 points. So even a run like that is worth points. So like there's basically never a reason to not submit that time unless you're worried about your average. But like if you just want points, you can basically just play each game casually. And like this is a run that I decided to not do a manipulated run at all for. And I still got 210 points. And you can see there's many people that have done like really good here because of the list. Like we have Aaron, we have Tom Cabs, Saitown, Sarkonis, Oreb, Vesper. Like this had this was really a prolific game because like all the people that was into the prolific list did this game because it was such an easy and quick game but let's showcase another game we can do uh, and let's do mickey's safari because we cannot fail that game so let's go to mickey's safari let's show the game and Boom. So, a quick tutorial for this game. You can manipulate the letter RNG here. Oh, we can check Home Alone right after this. 
We can check the home alone, because home alone is quite a unique uh, unique game when it comes to points. So we can check that right after. But yeah, for this game, uh, we you can manipulate the RNG right here. Like depending on what frame you hit start on, you will get different letters on for the game later. But yeah, we're gonna play normal, which is the category that is counted. So we're gonna do... I think timing starts when the screen goes black. Also, there's single voice and double voice, but... If you wanna know more about that, you can check out my uh, tutorial for this game. So, just to explain, I haven't run this game since I got the old world, world record, which was probably like a couple of years ago, basically. So, it, if I can get the time I get here my first try, you can probably get it within 10 tries. Oh, we got a single voice. Pipe. We do a cancel right there. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not what we should do, but it's okay. It's okay. Like... Like, that was a really bad stage, but it's still okay. And here we can get anything from P to T, I believe. Like, you, every stage can only end in shirt and letters. Uh, you always get a single voice there, if you remember to buffer. Okay, I gotta say I'm kinda impressed by myself that I actually remember, like, where, where to jump and everything in this game. Oh, I missed the start button press. Let's see what kind of points we get right here. We get an E. Obviously, I meant letter and not points. Oh, a single voice again. Oh, that was not great. Uh, let's try and go for the swag. Uh, uh, we missed the swag. We cancel fall damage by using the the net, which isn't actually optimal, but it's like more consistent. And Q. And this is how I learned the alphabet. Well, I learned it better, at least. That was the first double voice we got. Okay, this stage I always forget what to do. If I get this without taking any roll damage right away, I'm gonna be surprised. Okay, that was insane. I usually always get hit there. <laughs> And this can be, I think it's I to N or something. Okay. No, another double voice. A double voice you lose 61 frames on, by the way. And we're gonna go for a two frame jump. We got the two frame jump. And we are gonna gamble on getting A here. Let's see, do we get A? We are smart mashing. Oops. No, we're getting C. So that was a 356. So we can go really quickly and just check. What would that give us in points? And. It should be in here, so Leatherland. So I 
356 would give us 313 points basically and that was just with one simple D rust run so this is definitely a game you can definitely get like a sub 315 in just a couple of tries and get over 400 points and I'm not only saying that because I'm in second place and just want to gain points without doing it doing anything because that's another way you can gain points also I should move this way over here by the way so you can see what I'm actually looking at I forgot that it's cut off on stream so again it was worth 313 points down here but yeah that's another way you can do another uh, gain points is by just get people to play your game because that makes the game worth more points and as long as you have a good time it will just increase your like your point value to your time Uh, let me see, how long have we been going on for? Uh, let's show off one more game before we... No, let's show off two more games before we show off the other games. I think we have that time. And let's show off... Yeah, let's show off a game that might look good but isn't really that good unless you want to put in the points which I would say is Donkey Kong like that's a game that like many people have been coming into my chat and saying like that's a good game that's a game everyone should do but I feel like that's one of those games that where you also before we do, do, do that let's showcase the Home Alone page because we said we were going to do that. You 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 gotta remember that I do have ADD. So my focus is not long. <laughs> but yeah, this is the Home Alone page. So playing Home Alone is worth 121 points. Well, it's worth that much currently because what happens in this board is that everyone is tied well almost everyone there's a few people that pause the game or whatever but yeah everyone we get a 1958 well i think it was oversworn that told me that actually if you count the game in frames everyone would not be tied most likely it's due to like a frame rule or something when you start the game so i'm kind of happy it doesn't include frames because then it would just come down to pressing start on this correct frame but yeah uh basically 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 the more people that play the game the less the game will be worth to play And like getting a getting a, a run through in uh, in in Home Alone is kind of like uh, just learning the glitch and then go and make coffee and talk for twenty minutes. I basically made a Fika stream out of getting the world record, which. It's basically just me sitting, drinking coffee and eating buns. So, yeah, it's fairly free. And yeah, as Aaron is saying, like, like the points are counted by combining all the tied points divided by the people that has tied the points. So, anyone that comes in will just be part of those points and then divided so it will just continue dropping so and like no new players will really increase the points 
Yeah, exactly. So... Yeah, let me just showcase a Donkey Kong run really quickly. Um... And, uh... I have a bad controller. That's the issue currently. So do you know what? I'm gonna try and go for the ladder glitch, but if I fail it, we, we will just play through the game normally, just so I can showcase why this game is a little bit of a bad game to run. Also, my cat is so active, so can chat remind me to get, feed my cat after this? Or after the biobilly run, maybe? Because I don't want him to jump on my console. <laughs> during my run later <laughs> okay we are not gonna be uh, memeing or ranting or being toxic on the on the retro gaming live tv <laughs> marathon here so i will just say no but there, there there's a funny story about this game where uh, where uh, I was basically playing this game and I were complaining on that people with the keyboard were just like it was basically cheating in in this game because it makes stuff a little bit easier but then Soda contacted me and said like hey have uh, you checked the world record and then I checked it and I noticed that the world record was actually uh, illegal run so because of the prolific list, we caught someone that cheated in speedruns as well. Which is always a net positive when something can bring more eyes and just expose cheaters more eas easily. But yeah, let me do a run. Uh, timing starts when the character starts moving here. So let's just... Boom. Okay, gonna try and get the glitch. Wait. Okay, I'm actually gonna just skip the glitch completely. So we can showcase that you really need to learn glitches to even compete for uh, four points in this game. So, the reason why I say this game is a bad point game is because, like, you have the RNG to worry about. Uh, you have kind of hard tricks as well. Like, for example, the one cycle here is really hard. Oops, uh, I should have jumped there. But we are playing this the classical way. I've actually never gone the long way before. I wonder why that hasn't become uh, any, any category in this game, because I know Marble Madness has like all those kind of categories so here is where like playing on keyboard is a huge advantage because you can do like like frame perfect left to right inputs which if you have ever played on keyboard you know that's way easier and here is where the rng is disgusting because we really don't have any options but waiting right there. Oh. And that's time. So a 143 we can say. And we can check really quickly here what that would give us in points for this game. And let's see here. Mm, we need to go to here. And we need to go all the way over here. So you can see like 
Like the world record is a 103. Even when we start getting like two seconds behind, we're already down to 400 points. Another second down, we are down to less than 200. So you can see like getting into the top 100 here requires quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of work and that's why like like if you're like 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 when when we say good pp games we're talking about games that are that have several runners where you can easily start getting points and where it's beneficial to continue grinding and that's why i would recommend like uh, like uh, like don't come free because like it's easy to get a lot of points and it's way it's super worth it learning the hardest rats and so on or like mickey's safari for example really quickly to start gaining points and if you start learning like the manipulations double voices and stuff you start gaining a lot of points as well uh, but yeah we can do 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 it like this instead of me showcasing another game because i think people understand kind of how the list works now but maybe you're like uh, Jangle Storm just raided here for for example. Like, hey, where is it, where is Jangle Storm on this list? We can just go down, and we can check. He's ranked number fifty four, with nine thousand points. He has an average of two hundred eighty seven. So, so that's a pretty decent score. Uh, we can check the legendary Amad, which I believe he has a really good average. Like he has only ran eight games, an average of seven hundred and thirteen. So, who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe we will get an Amad going for top fifty for the next update, which. I do not know when the next update is happening. I would assume it's at end slash start of next month. Or end this month, start next month. Uh, we could check... Check the... Uh, like... Uh, uh, Anto... I don't know what his... Okay, he's, uh, he's down at, what would that be, 311th place here, with 11 games. Uh, did we have any other ones that I can just put out on stream here? We can check Pita, or Pitak, or whatever you want to call him. He's ranked... Yeah, maybe maybe Peter and Antol can have a friendly competition. <laughs> See who can g gain the most points. But but yeah, like I said, this list is mostly about like like for me at least, just like getting mot motivation, inspiration, and like fun competition. Like that's. That's the biggest thing, like, like, I really enjoyed grinding for top 10 when I did it, like, two months ago. And I might grind for, like, next time I might do, like, top 5 for fun in one month. But at least that gives me some motivation to continue speed, speed running because, because all of us know that being a speedrunner, your motivation really goes up and down. And having something that helps you push your motivation is really, really helpful. 
Uh, so let me just see. Yeah, I'm I'm just making sure to check Discord when I, when I see that I get added, just to make sure that uh, that nothing is going wrong in the background here. But yeah, yeah, like like you can put any kind of uh, uh, of uh, uh, motivation be behind whatever. Like maybe you just want to get top one hundred, which would be uh, getting a total of six thousand points, which you can do fairly quickly. Like I'm sure Aaron can type in chat, but I'm pretty sure like. Sark and I, man, if we had run no games before we did our push, we would be, uh, I believe, top 30, right? No, 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 Soda. We are gonna go over the other prolific lists here, just to showcase that not only NES gets this kind of love. But before we start going, we can do uh, either another game or let's actually actually I want to do one more game just because there's one type of game I really think is really worth playing so we are gonna do a classic game We're gonna do exactly what the game said, double dribble. So it's not basketball games specifically, but sports games in is usually really well or very really good to play. Uh, because you have usually you can play the game once or twice and get a decent time, but there's also an uh, incentive to continue pushing them. Like, golf games are usually really good. Uh, any game that has score X amount of goals are really good to play as well. Mm. Like, win a match, like, I don't like those categories. But they are pretty good to play, so sports games are really good to play. And one additional thing that is good to play are games with manipulations. So like Pictionary, uh, uh, Burger Time, do not play that game because that game almost made me quit speedrunning. Uh, I would say Trog is a good game. Like any game with manipulations that aren't like highly used by the people running the game are really good games to run. Like that's a great example by by way is Pictionary because like like if you look at that leaderboard like Yogi uses uses a manipulation but doesn't get a good time. Well, he, he gets a good time, but it's not optimized. I do a, a manipulator run, but it's not good. And then you have Soda that did like a fully manipulated run that is like way faster. So like you can do different levels of manipulations to uh, try and get as good of a time as possible. But yeah, sports games and games with manipulations and yeah, like Aaron said, like games that are prone to having tu tourists, which are usually easy games. Also, timing starts on Pro Up. I haven't played this game in a little bit, so... So... This is a score 100 points category. So we're just gonna score three pointers. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is a game I do need to return to as well. Because one thing I did that I regret that I did was I started playing games offline because I was was too tired to stream. And I actually PB PB'd in this game. And then I decided I don't wanna do offline runs or offline PB runs. Or whatever. So we we are gonna go back and do this game at some point for people that enjoyed the 300 resets per hour type of stream. But for today we're just gonna do like a simple run. Like accept all the flaws we do and see what kind of time we get and see how many points it's worth. Just to showcase why uh, sports games are good. Also why sports games are bad because they are usually very RNG driven as well. But, but one thing I gotta say about like I didn't speedrun many sports games before the list like I did a few golf games and a few sports games but I never really enjoyed that until I started doing this list because like the most fun was probably just uh, getting like getting through that RNG grind like there there's very few things in spear running that is as rewarding to get a good time in a game that has a lot of RNG. Which might sound weird. But as someone that has grinded games with zero RNG and a lot of RNG, I can say that both are equally uh, rewarding feeling but in two different ways like 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 if uh, we gotta pick two very extremes here like one game that has zero RNG that was felt really good when I got the run I wanted was uh, uh, was 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 school school and it just felt really well because I knew like my execution was on point and everything versus let's say Michael Jordan's fast break for example like 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 the feeling the final few seconds where I knew I had the world record if the game just didn't screw screw me over and finally getting the run. That was just an amazing feeling. Also, we're starting to get up to time here. Uh, we need four more baskets. Two more baskets. And one more basket. And time. So I have 457 here. Let's check what that would be working points really quickly. And let's go to here. And we can type double ripple. Not triple, dribble. So uh, four fifty-seven. Let oh, I did swap. It was just <laughs> just the uh, the restream that was a little bit delayed. 
So yeah, a 457 would be 225 points, and you see, like, that's something... Like, I pl play this game a lot, so obviously I... I have a lot of experience with this game. But you, you, you can see, like... Like... Even a sub 6 is worth over a hundred points. And like, you can see like, you can improve quite a lot. Like, I would say... The hardest point, like the first real big challenge of this run is beating Toad. Like, anytime Toad is on a leaderboard, you know that's a hard person to beat. But the places after that is when it starts getting really hard. So, like, like I said, sports games are really good and everything. So, uh, let me do this. And let's turn on some music in the background again. Uh, okay, my whole computer froze for a second, so I just need to check, so things work still and uh, it seems like I'm still alive so I'm gonna assume I'm still alive otherwise someone will yell at me but yeah let's let's check the other prolific list so there are two other prolific list I know about. There might be more, but we're gonna check out the the NES cousin, the MOS system. And it has a different uh, uh, different point system which we will go over. So here is the MOS system one. So basic, basically, uh, you take like the main category for each game. Also, let me lower the music in my ears. Also, let's turn off my NES so it doesn't make weird sounds in the background. And now I can focus. So yeah, it takes uh, uh, the main category. It gives it a... Uh, gives you a uh, uh, standard points of uh, 1000 points per game but every runner that runs the game adds 100 extra points to the value so uh, basically if someone runs one a game even if it's only one the game is worth 1100 points and it caps at 3000 points and the points works kind of like at the Catlon kind of way where uh, the world record always get the maximum points and everyone else gets points based on their time. So like, like uh, even if you're third place and someone gets beats you, you will not lose points. Unless it's a new world record. And that's only if the if there already is 30 no 20 players on that lead, leaderboard. So here we can see an example of it. So you can see if my cat wanna move, and I can see as well. <laughs> that's it. Come. Trying to get my cat to relax a little bit. So yeah, so you can see uh, exa an example here. And if we move over here, uh, Peter made a little bit of a slide here for me. So you can see like here are example of my points here. So you can see, like, for example, my my biggest points is in Mojo World, which is uh, a 13-player run, uh, 
and my raw score is 1000 and it's scaled to 2300 and if you check something like Tom and Jerry here <coughs> even though I'm ranked lower I still get more more points than I do in in like psychic world because because there are like more uh, players in the leaderboard but because every game is worth like a thousand points and at maximum three thousand points like there's this list promotes you just running games way more than the nes does and it kind of works for this sega mod system because it has way less games because i think it has a little bit over 300 games so yeah let's go to uh, game recommendations here like Peter wanted to recommend some games and I can tell you about it so if you want to start running games there are many good James Pond 2 sheet percent is a really quick run to learn it's basically like learning uh, urban champion or any of the black box games basically really short really quick mm -hmm. and uh, we have pip pop which is a very simple one state platformer sega chess which is I would say it's like Seth Master, but it's very similar. California game, 80%. It's just like the NES run, I believe, where you just fail every run. Uh, Credit Warps, you have like Soul, 80%, which is kind of rough to pull off, but you, you only need to do it once. And you have like links to the YouTube links here, if you want to watch tutorial. Is any percent is a really fun game to actually grind. I had a lot of fun just grinding this game to be honest. And uh, Bat Batman Returns is actually a really good mod system game. I can highly recommend it. And Elf is actually a better game than you would expect. Like it's awful, but it's still a really fun game. And this is what I really like. Are you a gaming snob who only wants to run good video games? Or you're a fan of top NES games? We got you covered. And yeah, we have Castle, Land, Legend of Illusion, Lucky Dime Caper and Aladdin. Which is all really, really solid Disney games. I can really recommend all of them. Uh, the Ninja Gaiden game is really good as well. Like, it's really good. And uh, Asterix, I do not like personally, but it's still a good game. Alice Kid in Shinobi World is a really fun game. And Wonder Boy games are really good. Uh, Castlevania Runners, you have Master of Darkness, also a really fantastic game if you haven't tried it. And, and uh, here from the last Master 8, we have Earth of Yim, Dynamite Head, Echo the Dolphin, Street of Rage, Moonwalker, like all good games. And you have a few puzzle games here. Columns is basically the Genesis version of uh, Tetris. Baku Baku is, is actually really good. I've only run the Genesis Mean Bean Machine. And I can understand why it's unran because it's impossible to beat. And Lemmings it's just a really fun game to watch in my opinion and uh, for racing games out outrun is really fun it's really rough port the moss system one though and you have world grand prix 
hang on, road rash, micro machine, buggy run. Like there's a lot of racing games you can play. Yeah, I guess there's Sonic as well on the mod system, but but <coughs> Sonic game sucks. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding, kidding. Some Sonic games are actually 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 quite fun. But yeah, and uh, Hidden Gems, we have a Quartet, which is actually a really good and fun game. One, one of my favorite games, Psychic World. Mm. I should have submitted that to Retroton. Retroton, if uh, you need a backup runner, just let me know and I'm pulling out the Psychic World run. It's gonna be rusty, but if you just need it, just hit me up and I will pull put it in <laughs> and we have the uh, term terminator which is a really rough game and we have uh, have rambo and uh, oh golden x warriors a superb game like there are so many good games also we have two ads let me just double check so there's nothing weird going on. Yeah. But yeah, let me just do the, mo the Mega Drive list really quickly here. So this is the Mega Drive list. Uh, if you go to Sierra Cruz Discord, you can find it. This one works differently. It's like a list between... You get six points minimum. And then you get one extra points per person you beat and so on and uh, we are gonna move on to the next game now because we talked a little bit too much here so we are gonna move on but if you wanna check out the genesis list a little bit more it's very simplistic really easy list to understand what this list does is it promotes you running popular games because you get one point per person you beat on each leaderboard plus five points for running the game. So Sonic games are really easy to run, like a lot of points and everything. And uh, also I want to shout out the Son Sonic 2 community for changing the timing of their game to RTA, which promotes a way better speed run. Anyways, that's it for the prolific list. I will see if they are gonna do a scene change while I swap game here and uh, I will be right back with uh, some adventure of Biobilly and cycle race in a few seconds Ooh. <clears throat> my cat is attacking me oh <laughs> 